Welcome to Binary Jazz. It's been a while. Uh, the podcast with that's decreasingly topical and increasingly, I don't know, improvisational. It's more jazz than binary. Oh, I like that, actually. I like that a lot. I've got this problem going on. Oh, were you done with the intro? You are. You're drinking. I'm just going to go. Sure. Um, yeah, I have go these for headphones, it. as you can see. And if you're listening, you cannot see, but you can no. hear. Um, <laughs> this is so, an audio format. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure in the future, AI will take our places. And I'll be like a Tyrannosaurus Rex or something. Um, yeah. So, in any case, um, what was I saying? Oh, these headphones. headphones. Um, they have... Um, um, can't I turn myself? No, I can't on this computer. I was like, can I turn myself into a dinosaur in here? I can't. <laughs> um, so I haven't said this for a while, and like every year ish, I have to replace the the pads because they start wearing out, and then I have this like black stuff on my face. Um, like just sticking from the headphones. Like I take them off, and it's like, are you Feeling. are you molting? What's going on? Um, so. These ones are like past that point, but I've been super heads down for three months. Hello, it's nice to see you again and mm -hmm. be out mm -hmm. of my my hole in the ground. Um, uh, so yesterday, like I was in and out of them, except for the last nine hours of my day. Um, and um, but before that, like every time I got up, I was just like, man, my face itches and I would scratch and like just black stuff would be shedding off my face. So I... I need to I need to replace them or get new things it's because fun. it's mm -hmm. it's it's past mm -hmm. time. Here we are. My mm -hmm. chair does the same thing. My chair is really old and it's like peeling and I'll just be like, what is this? And then I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, chair. it's chair. <laughs> I have a yeah. I have a, a, you know, whatever mat that I stand on and it's also very old and it's also peeling. And so you'll see random bits of black rubberized material unidentifiable and it's like what's all this black stuff and it's yeah it's it's the mat it, it happens to things um i was wearing a bright orange shirt yesterday um so it was just really evident too like i'd be like looked at my shirt like what if, what what is happening <laughs> um yeah yesterday the new lasso website launched um so when you are listening to this a week from September 28th, 2023. I don't know. Yes, a week from yesterday. A week from whenever is today. <laughs> I mean... What is time? Yeah, sometime. So a date we arbitrarily marked as September 28th, 2023 is when the new NASA website launched. Unless you're listening to this after the next new site launches. So whatever the 2023 version of new is, the last one lasted 12 years or something. So it seems likely this one will be around for a little while. That's a good um, run. It was a it was it was showing maybe too long of a run. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, but I don't know that it could have. I mean, I think that it would have happened sooner, except for the federal government had this. Um, in 2018, the Idea Act came out, which was about consolidating websites so every agency doesn't have a million sites. They've got like one entry point for the mm -hmm. citizen instead of this, you know, ridiculous mess that it is now. Um, and that definitely caused NASA to pivot and really focus on uh consolidation and you know serving the the site visitor in a much better way and that turned into a much longer process than just uh like a reskinning which they ordinarily would would have done in the mm -hmm. in the meantime um in any case we've been in beta since um july 27th i think and um so there's this uh looming government shutdown coming in the united states if you're uh if you're aware of uh that particular nation um <laughs> and uh, government shutdown is caused when a budget cannot be passed, when some pompous assholes want uh, headlines more than they want a functional government. Um, uh, and I kind of thought that like about shutdowns, but now that I'm like front row for shutdowns, it's the DC thing on shutdowns is ridiculous. Like some of the people I work with are talking about, oh, because my IP address is in DC, like I'm getting targeted YouTube ads. Like, uh, unable to work like book a spot oh. at this like massage parlor or this spa or um <laughs> hey 
uh, now's a good time to book a vacation, like literally targeting federal workers who are going to be out of, you know, furloughed for who knows how long, like, hey, come on out. Um, and what <laughs> happens day is, we'll, we'll cure what ails you. <laughs> well, what happens is they all get furloughed, so they can't work. And then when they have the, they come back, it's not like everybody comes back the next day. It's like, oh, well, I'm out of state. So I'll be back when, when, you know, on this date. So it, 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 uh, yeah, it sounds like just a ridiculous pain in the ass to get everything back moving again. Even if it's just a day, it's just like, um, I have a meeting after this where we're talking about like what can actually happen. And it's like, well, you know, what are the kinds of content changes that can happen? There's no new content allowed. Can we fix typos? Well, no, we Please cannot let fix us typos. Say, let us fix typos. Can we fix broken URLs? Yes, we can fix broken URLs. Why broken URLs and not typos? I don't know. Way what above if the typo the... is the URL. <laughs> no, you may fix the link itself, but not the typo in the URL. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I know. And who knows, like, what the guidance will be by the time the thing actually happens. Um, so all this conversation is happening now, which means all the other work that's supposed to be happening is not happening. And then let's say like a deal happens like this afternoon. I've still probably, me personally, been in four hours of meetings around this. And some of these people have been in 40 plus hours of meetings. It's just like, it's so dumb. It's like, oh, it's saving the government money. Bullshit. It is just an absolute money and time suck. It makes everything worse. It's <laughs> it's it's so much worse than I ever imagined. A shutdown is just like, oh, oh. I'm I'm gonna like sit on a copier in or a fax machine and send faxed copies of my buttocks to people that don't make this happen or make this happen or whatever. Um, but the result of that is we had to. I saw like surprise faces. What's happening? Did something? No, I was just I was just being like, has is this a thing in Canada? Like has have, has the government ever shut down? And then I all I found was an article that was like how we what we have in place so that we this never happens here <laughs> i haven't read um, the article yet but <laughs> just because i was the, like i don't know if i've ever heard about this happening but that doesn't mean it's never happened it's just anyway yeah continue <laughs> and the definition of like like essential employees is pretty slim at least in the areas i work in so like every civil servant I know is like, oh, you know, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Like, are you kidding? Like, this is ridiculous. Um, but the result was we, we, there was a conversation early in the week, like, well, can we launch any earlier than Thursday? Um, I mean, there were no technical reasons, but there were like real reasons like, well, yeah. I mean, the people that changed the DNS are set to do it on Thursday and the people that like handle the SSO changeover and all that stuff are scheduled for Thursday. Like, I don't know if we can get them to move on a Tuesday night to make it happen on Wednesday or Monday night to make it happen on Wednesday and all that mess. And um, so we started launch at 2 p.m. We were supposed to do DNS cut over at 3 p.m., but it didn't happen until like 7 p.m. Um, the database search replace took a lot longer because there was a requirement to log all the changes in the DB search and replace, even though we had a backup from right before we did the search and replace. So mm -hmm. <sighs> but you did it it's done it's done yeah and it's i walked downstairs at eight o'clock and was like yes and at 8 30 i got a message on my cell phone like hey there's like one tiny thing can you come take a look at i'm like are you kidding and i did and i was there till 10 o'clock but oh no it wasn't tiny yeah. at all <laughs> that was it was pretty tiny it, like it was just a matter of like i was moving very slowly and deliberately because i knew that i was just like totally tapped so out tired. Did, yeah. didn't want to make like a really dumb mistake and be like Oh, You're I like, took the site down. Hold on, I'll bring it back up. <laughs> One moment, please. <laughs> that would be a really bad look at that point in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely broke some protocols on deploying to master, but whatever. It's fine. You did it. You did well, it. Well, uh, turns out that I am going to be going to Bad Camp, which is Bay Area Drupal Camp. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> I was just like, if they're already calling it bad, bad why are bad you going? Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's being hosted at the Pantheon Pagoda in San Francisco. So my manager had suggested, and it's in November, middle of November. If anybody is listening to this and going, uh, you can say hi. Uh, maybe I'll be on your team, I guess. Um, it's a hackathon, uh, two-day hackathon, I guess. Uh, and yeah, I'm going. He, he, since it's at the Pagoda, um, my manager is like, we should 
see if we can get people who are interested to come out to you know do it and it'll be my first time at the official pantheon headquarters Mm, that's fun does it require like an id and all that kind of stuff to get i mean probably not during the you know what no idea (laughs) (laughs) you know figure it out (laughs) when in november is it is it around thanksgiving Uh, or no 18th 19th oh okay well I might be in the Bay Area later on in the month. So I yeah, like, I'll be not I'll that be, I'd be going to bad camp, but right. I was like, well, a Chris sighting is always fun. <laughs> I'll be I'll be flying out the 17th, flying to San Francisco the 17th, and I'll be flying out on the 20th. Okay. Uh-huh. So the weekend before, basically. That makes sense. Yeah, I didn't even think about the Thanksgiving timing at all, um, which is interesting that they would have timed it the weekend before Thanksgiving, but who knows? Whatever. G- better than the weekend of Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty regional though, right? I would think. Yeah. So there's there's, there's I mean it's basically a local Drupal camp. Yeah. Um, it just has a cooler name. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I don't think all of the Drupal camps uh are necessarily hackathons. It's just this one I specifically. Think all the Drupal camps are bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On, only only Bay Area. Well, yeah. that's kind of exciting to go to the headquarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it'll be my first Drupal event and and all that sort of stuff. So, mm-hmm. so this is tangentially related to to Gary's uh, NASA announcement because Na- the NASA website was migrating away from Drupal, and I will mm-hmm. be entering into Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not entering necessarily. Like I have kind of been in the space vaguely from from the periphery for. A, you know, last I, I thought you were going to finish that sentence not entering like I'm not committing myself to the code base in any way shape or form but... yeah <laughs> I'm definitely not doing that <laughs> um, but I, I can answer Drupal questions in, in as much as they uh, are actually questions about Composer <laughs> I had someone reach out and ask me about Drupal related things and I don't even remember what the questions were because that's how much I didn't understand what they were talking about and I had to write back and it's just like this is not my wheelhouse but Mm. I don't even have people to refer you to (laughs) also they weren't willing to pay anybody for a consultation so I was just like I don't I especially don't have anybody yeah I definitely don't have anybody to refer you to (laughs) but I like I don't know I referred them to like online resources yeah (laughs) so I was like maybe these will answer these Seemingly org is a thing, I think. <laughs> yeah. Check out these docs. Um, I went to WordCamp Vancouver. Yeah. Yes. I, I want to that... report on that. Um, it was good. It was good. Um, classic Allison introvert WordCamp. Um, chatted with like a few people and then quickly retreated <laughs> into my own world of <laughs> my making. Um, the talks I went to were really good overall. Um, I kind of pieced out later in the day because I was just, it's I was hard. just toast. That, and that, that post lunch, uh, stretch is pretty rough. It was hard. And like, I was really interested in the talk, but it turns out that one of the speakers couldn't make it cause he didn't get his passport in time or something. Mm. And so then he recorded his talk and I was like, well, that's fine. I'll like listen to the recorded talk, but he was just reading off slides and mm. I was like, and then, so then I was like out in the hallway after, cause I was just like, I can't listen to someone read slides right now. I'm just going to fall asleep. And, um, I went out in the hallway and then was like, Oh, I have another hour before another talk starts. I was just like, I might just call it a day and wander around the city instead. Um, so that's what I did. And then it started raining and I was like, yeah, that seems right for me. That's, that's yeah. Appropriate. We're pretty on brand. Yeah, I was like, well, fine. But it was nice just to walk around um, a bigger city and I don't know, just chill out. And- Does that word camp do pretty well with, with dietary stuff at lunch? You know what? I was pretty impressed because not only did they have like the separate options, but they like kind of secluded it in a different area. So we didn't have to wait in the same line as everybody else. Yeah. Which sounds so petty, but I was like, look how long that line is. And then I was like, sweet. The vegetarian line is like... Hmm so so short i don't know why this reminded me of that but there was this um at WordCamp us at lunch one day there was this soup that was was a vegetarian option and um it was a butternut squash soup but 
not like okay great i love that but it was like sweet like oh like, like a almost coconut like milk a, sweet or like nope like a sugary sweet oh. um and it was it was bizarre it was like the first bite you were like oh this is interesting by the third bite you're like i don't know I that don't i want, want more this. of this <laughs> but i ate it because i was like i need to keep my self going that's how i felt at lunch um i was like the lunch was delicious but I was like I have to like I was hungry but not that hungry and I was like I need to eat otherwise this is not I'm just gonna crash hard and not even make it back to the ferry terminal <laughs> mm. I had um broccoli cheese soup for lunch yesterday thinking like that's gonna be like a big bowl of it like that's gonna give me you know the energy I need to get no, through that's like nap city <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> well I well I was pretty I was extremely amped yesterday oh, like okay. I was I was that's out of bed true. at 4 a.m like <laughs> wide-eyed um but yeah then two o'clock turned into three o'clock and we were just waiting for like db stuff to happen and that turned into like five o'clock like have i been in this call for three hours like oh you were on doing... a call oh that's horrible <laughs> there were there were like 50 people not really uh 31 i think was the most but there were 31 people on this call between these hours of 2 p.m and when we finally were live at 8 p.m um, oh all right and a lot of it was like silent and people coming every 15 minutes for like status updates. Mm -hmm. Um, cause this, we had this checklist for yesterday, all these steps that had to take place. And it was, I think I pieced out at like step 104. And I think there were like 109. Um, and three of them were mine. Like three of them were things I had to do. Um, were they like super official, like a NASA countdown kind of steps or they're like uh, some, of, so some <laughs> of them were, some of them there actually were like, like the DNS cut over. Um, requires um, someone to suggest, like, uh, we, we, we've reached, you know, all this other, we've done all this other crap. That's probably not what was said, but something like that. Um, so we're ready to do DNS cut over. Uh, I suggest we, uh, you know, implement the DNS change, and that's from a contractor. And then the civil servant has to agree. And then the person doing the DNS cut over can log both those names and make the change. Yeah. Um, and we had three domains that were being cut over. So that had to happen three times yesterday. or So six people had to speak to make that happen. That was really official. I'm trying to think whether really official ones there were. I mean, some of the stuff, it was like, some of it could kind of happen in parallel. So once the DB update was changed, there was like a, um, you know, on, <laughs> on local personal machines, like update your host file and, mm. and you know, verify things are loading. Um, the DNS um, stuff on... Uh, the NASA side um, is a little tricky because NASA, you know, manages the DNS. So making the change, it was it was actually live for the public before it was live internally on VPN. So that was problematic just from the sense of like, can't do single sign on until it's available in the VPN. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a little bit of that. I had to wait for the DNS to propagate internally, which took longer than externally and um, those kinds of silly things. I think, the, I think the DNS was the only official, official one. There were several where it was like, the question was raised, like, are there any objections to, you know, entering into the next step? But I had a couple CLI commands that I ran. And once the DB search from the place was done, I could do that without, you know, really asking permission. It was just the requirement of this other stuff happening. Um, and then we had a DDoS last night. Pretty big one. Um, cool. Shrug. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I mean, like, the, not my department, like. You're like that's on someone what, else's watch. <laughs> what do you have in in front of the site to to mitigate or handle uh, DDoSs? Like, um, or did I actually have down? no idea. Yeah, cool. But yeah. whatever. It's, it was, like, like when I say it's like not my department, like presumably it, there's something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely infrastructure for it because um, we were still like like sub one second response at ninety five ninety fifth percentile while it was happening, so. 99th we saw some some delayed responses but it was you know hmm. yeah apparently it was fine i don't know i i mean it wasn't enough for anybody i, I don't even know how to get a hold of me because my phone was off so <laughs> I, what, what would i do like having a if ddos you don't, if you, i don't know you don't like, have that plugging. information you're not going to be much help <laughs> yeah yeah, I, yeah exactly like i'm not the person that has anything to do with which is cool i mean it's the nice part of having the, the structure is that there are people that are like there to you know handle and mitigate those kinds of things and I am not one of them. <laughs> um, yeah, we had some like minor like, um, oh, hey, here's some redirects that are pointing to the, you know, the beta domain and, and that kind of silliness. 
Um, and just content artists this morning that, you know, are were confused or misunderstood or whatever. And, you know, trying like my stuff isn't working the way I thought it should, or it's missing or. That feels kind of you know. par for the course. Just. Yeah. We have like 450 people in, in the NASA website, like managing their own content. Everybody from like, you know, it it is. Yeah. For, for a site of this size, it is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I mean, and there's some, there's some guardrails, but there's also, you know, there's some people at like an editorial level that are, you know, the comm side that can do whatever they need to do on anybody's content um, and sort of have the final say in, in, you know, making sure the quality's there and whatnot. So, um, you know, with that many people, you're going to have some conflict um, um, decisions and it's, uh, and who owns what, what path. That's fun. Uh, what content should be at this path. Like, yeah, that sounds awfully familiar. Who owns what thing? Yeah. Well, um, we it doesn't matter from that. like a development perspective. <laughs> we have a lot it's of like that. It does matter from a development perspective. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And and like, we, I, I was like, we're, we're hitting a code freeze on like a week before this thing knowing full well, like we're going to have deploys after that, but we targeted mm -hmm. the code freeze a week ago on Thursday. And then Monday we had a couple releases that were minor, you know, Tuesday, there was some straggler stuff like, Oh, we need this uh, tracking code or whatever that needs to be in there. When you, and I, I say you broadly because it might not be you personally, Gary, but maybe it is you personally, Gary, uh, decide that there should be a code freeze. Yes. Um, how is that communicated across teams? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I have a welcome. personal vested interest in this. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it sort of works this way. So we have a loose network of people that we know are, are known to be contributing to the code base. So there's the primary development team. There are six or seven other teams that have committed code in different ways or or and that the primary dev team is supporting in some way, you know, some kind of communication with. So we have office hours from time to time, like weekly, from time to time, like literally on a schedule from time to time. Uh, it's just, they just seem to pop up and surprise well, me. It sounds so like loosey goosey. I was just like, it's probably no, there's it, a schedule. There is totally a schedule. I don't, I'm always surprised by it. And never mind that it happens every single week at the same time. I'm like, is that today? Yep. It's still Tuesday. Um, so that's one, one communication avenue, but also those office hours um, backfill like the notification channel. So it's like, these are the people that, we can notify in Teams because they've been to office hours. They're going to see this. But we can also pull that out and send an email to all those people that have attended office hours and say, hey, this is happening. Um, we, on the project in general, there's also a person whose uh, only job is communications with um, mostly editors because there's so many so many more of them. But, I mean, pretty much anything we need. So, um, you know, like yesterday, there was a point where it was like, you are no longer allowed to log in. And people are like, I'm having trouble logging in. Well, did you not read the message? Like it's, you know, that's also Here part of the course. <laughs> yeah. And then that same person, you know, drafts and sends out the, the message that we're live, but only after the civil servants have reported to their management that things are live and their management looks at it and says, yes, leave it live. I like, we had a rollback plan in case they were like, no, but I mean, it was going to be like, if we have to roll back at this point, like this is going to be an all nighter to, mm. to roll back, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, it would have worked, but it would have been miserable for all of us. So yeah. Uh, and nobody expected that, um, but yeah. So you're so to answer your question, like we have a a list of people that are contributing and show up for office hours that we communicate with. Um, also, no one. I mean, that doesn't stop. Like, I mean, we probably had twenty five pull requests open between Thursday of last week and this week that I haven't looked at that I'll get to next week point. sometime. Yeah. Um, so I mean, or if not if, if there's a government shutdown and you can't work on things. Well, I can. I mean, I can review code. Yeah, you can work stage. on things until yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, until you can't. Yeah, but I mean, there were there were there were tickets that I was monitoring when those pull requests opened. Mm -hmm. um, those were the ones I was chasing down and making sure they're deployed and QA was aware of. And um, so the other stuff was noise, and uh, I used tags on pull requests pretty liberally, um, so I can just visually check and be like, oh, all the pink ones, these are the ones I'm working, and you know, these orange ones are cool to sit there for a while. Um, I've got like a WTF purple tag. It doesn't say WTF, but in my head, that's what it says. Um, it's labeled merge later. 
<laughs> but that later is like sometimes that later it's it's better than being like merge i don't know never. what to do with this yeah, yeah 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 so merge later sometimes like that turns into a dialogue it's like well maybe you should break this pull request into pieces or maybe this is the wrong approach or the wrong code base for this uh <laughs> could you do this somewhere else <laughs> like or not at all <laughs> um yeah so all that all that silliness um also is uh just part of it so yesterday we had like no it was it was funny because our colleagues over at um the science side were uh were chasing a, a bit more they weren't able to get to where they wanted to be you know um they just had some more demands from stakeholders that uh, we didn't uh, so at one point someone said i'm really jealous of your lack of traffic in your repo right now because <laughs> they have a super <laughs> repo uh uh and then they messaged me at like one o'clock about a question on some language in some static strings um that still mentioned you know the it didn't talk about the beta site but um like something like during this testing phase and so I was like, I don't know. So that one had to go through a bunch of other people that approved these language things. And um, I'm like, nope, it's staying that way. But I thought we were going to have like a, you know, quick pull request there. But no, nothing until we went live. And there was one PR that couldn't be merged until we were live because it would be a redirect loop. So that was staged and ready to go. That was one of my three things. And then last night I had two tiny ones that were just related to other silliness and and I've had one today. We never deploy on Fridays, but with a shutdown looming, it doesn't feel like a Friday. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's done. Yay! And For yeah. now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's done, and now the real work begins. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> the. The cool part is that there is absolutely recognition that this is not like a one and done process and that there is um like a healthy good. budget in place to yeah, to keep to people keep it running. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean there's a backlog of features, but in addition to that, there's just there's bugs and there's um accessibility misses and there's mobile misses and there's you know, there's just things that need to be handled and uh and the space is there for that and the uh right people will continue on for that. So uh, that's also very, uh, very cool. Um, I got uh, I got a new laptop this week. Oh. For Not, work or for no for, for home because yeah. the lap my old laptop the screen died. Oh. Um, I've had this before. Um, let's see, yeah, the last time it happened it was Aaron's laptop, which is actually my older older laptop. Um, and. Like the screen just like there's a certain point where the cable that connects the screen to the mach to the laptop just like gets worn and then the screen just starts like like gl glitching out basically mm -hmm. um with her it like really glitched out like um it was like weird staticky kind of stuff and with me it just sort of like gradually faded to white um which would then like go away temporarily if I like closed the laptop a little bit and reopened it. Um, but then it would do <laughs> it again. I'm sure you used this as a strategy for a little, a little but bit. But it only lasted like two days. I mean, it was like, it was literally like one day last week, it started doing it and I could kind of get around for around it for like two days. And I'm like, yeah, I should probably do something about it. And then after that, it, it was, that was it. Like I really couldn't use it. Um, so I took it in on, on Tuesday and it was going to be $600 to replace the display. Um, that laptop is also having sticky keys because it has the old butterfly keys. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be $600 to fix the display and not the keyboard. And I'm sure, right? Like, yeah. and for the, so like the display needs to be, that's the whole top half. And then the keyboard, I'm pretty sure they basically replaced the bottom half. So like at that point, what's the point of having? <laughs> You're like, what am I even doing over here? <laughs> right. Well, so, yeah, you're keeping the hard drive. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so when, when we went in last year, when this happened to Aaron, um, uh, they said, well, or you could get a MacBook air, like the, the bottom level MacBook air. And we're like, well, I don't know, kind of like, um, and so we didn't do it. And then later we kind of kicked ourselves for not doing it. We're like, we probably just should have done it. Um, so I asked him like, well, what would it be like last time we had this happen? They, they suggested that what would the trade-in be? What would it, what would the math look like? 
Um, so they had a bottom level M1 air that would have been like, so it would it got $370 in credit and that one, the bottom level is like 1099. So it would have been like a little bit more than what I would have been paying for the display or for a hundred dollars more than that, I could get an M2 and I could make it black. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and which option did you go with? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough, that's a tough one. So not super happy about having to spend, you know, 700 and whatever change, but yeah. at the same time, like I was looking at basically that anyway, to, to have a functioning laptop. So yeah, I, I bought Rhonda a MacBook Air. Oh, it was a Christmas present. She needed a new laptop. So it was a Christmas present this year. It's last year. I, and it, year. Like it, it does it's have a great machine. Yeah. It, 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 like my old laptop had like a terabyte hard drive and this has 256 so like obviously it's not but also like i don't use that much space anymore mm -hmm. um you know like it's not i'm not expecting to play a ton of games that said it plays uh magic the gathering arena way better than my old laptop did so <laughs> that m2 chip another is, bonus yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but it won't run any of my old uh, Windows games through Crossover because I think there's M2 yeah. problems with with Crossover, which is sad. Um, <laughs> however much I try. So you need to get a cheap Windows machine, is what you're saying? I mean, or, or just f now he has free time. <laughs> yeah, now I have free time. All right, that's a good. Well, no, all my all my free time the last couple of days has been trying to get Crossover to work. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that the Raspberry Five, Raspberry Pi Five came out? I saw something recently about Raspberry Pi because I was looking at Raspberry Pi again. Because the other, the other thing that is on my mind is we have a Mac Mini that I use as a media server for like Plex and things, and that's been dying for a, a very long time. It's Ugh. very, very old. Um, and I was like, I wonder if I could do this on a Raspberry Pi, um, because like all of the all of the media Maybe? files are on an external drive anyway. Like they're all like on USB external hard drives. So like all I really need it to do is run a web server with a couple things. Like yeah. I, I use like Sickbeard uh, to like tell me when stuff is available. And then I run Plex and I really, that's that's kind of all I, I use it for. I was using it for, um, for like a Dropbox mirror. Um, but since I haven't been doing that because um, the version of Mac OS that's on the mini is not compatible with the current version of uh, Dropbox, and I can't upgrade because it's too old. So not doing that anymore. Um, so yeah, I, I started looking at that and basically decided that with like a hundred dollar, uh, maybe hundred and fifty dollar Pi with some stuff, I could probably make a Plex server uh, that does everything that my Mac Mini is doing currently. I think the only question is like if it's doing any kind of transcoding. I think that's where you get limited with it. Yes, it does do some transcoding, um, but I have seen things where like, oh, well, if you just always use this file format, it doesn't need to transcode and then you don't need to worry about it. Um, and I think like I think it was like NKV and that's basically what most of the stuff I'm downloading uh, is is running. Um, and if not, I could probably convert stuff to that. Hmm. We have a, uh, a NAS that uh, we used as our Plex server for a while and um but also just backup so now it's just backup because i can't get it to work after the last operating system update because mm -hmm. it's just too heavy mm -hmm. on the cpu mm -hmm. and on the way i'm like well i should replace it in the hand i'm like no one has asked for any of this content that <laughs> is in plex so just gonna pretend like it's fine and then when people be like oh that's weird it's not working let's watch something on netflix or disney plus or the million other streaming services we we like, do actually use it. Um, one of the one of the problems with the mini is that the Wi Fi will randomly cut out. So I have another like like a USB wireless adapter that I plug in as like a backup, so it has an extra IP address. But when um, but oh, I, I also I, I also run um, all my devices should have multiple IP addresses. Yeah, I, I also run a a VP, I run it through a VPN. Um, so when the Wi Fi the onboard Wi Fi craps out then the vpn also craps out and then it's basically inaccessible um and yep. um uh aaron uses uh the plex because we have a bunch of like workout type stuff on there 
Um, so when the when it craps out, then that means she can't do things, and then she complains to me, and then I have to reboot the Mac Mini, which is another reason why I want to run something that's a little bit more stable and doesn't just fall apart uh, after some period of time. Um, yeah. How many years um, old is this Mac Mini though? Oh, it's so old. I don't even. It's it's <laughs> very old. It was old when I got it because I got it used. Um, yeah. So. I have I have one of those. I have one. I can see it from where I'm sitting, and I can see the dust on top of it because I haven't been plugged in <laughs> in so long. And for a while, I thought, I will run this, and I will use it as a remote machine so that I can, from my iPad, you know, have like an IDE, mm-hmm. um, which was awesome for the first 90 seconds <laughs> I was using it. And then, and then it was like all sorts of like, why are the key commands not forwarding and, uh, you know stuff like that i i looked briefly into because we have a an xbox one and i was like i wonder if i could make that a plex server yeah but because it's basically a windows machine and i think the well the the answer that i came to or the conclusion i came to is the answer is no because it's not actually running windows um Mm -hmm. i mean i guess it kind of sort of is but like plex is just a client app uh for the xbox and there's not really a way to make it a server app uh probably without like hacking it and i could i could hack it i could make a hack box um but i that was not a path that i decided to go down like if if there was a point at which like there was a point where i got an xbox for the purpose of making it into a media like a hacking a hack box media server and then I got like halfway into it and then we ended up not using it. And that was the original model Xbox. Um, mm-hmm. And so like, yeah, I mean, if we were going to throw this thing away, then then yeah, but we still use it or I still use it. Um, hey, now that I'm through this this site launch, can we get some time to migrate Binary Jazz? You and me, Chris? Sure. Okay. <laughs> what if I want to tag along? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> no. We should, we, you know what we should do? We should do that one... We shouldn't record it, but we should just do that as a hangout one time. <laughs> it'd be it'd be hysterical. Yeah, maybe I'll and I wonder how far... <laughs> <laughs> Allison's like, nah, I don't I'm have not any idea what's going on, and I'll just be like working in the background. <laughs> it's it's this weird thing where it when I set it up um on the new server, it was just like I could load it if I did the the set up my own host file, but when I changed the DNS, it was just like no way, no how am I am I serving this? And I'm like, hmm. I don't I don't know. I'm missing something obvious and I need someone to hold my hand and you know. And that person? Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean it probably Yeah, this is that department. A, like it what's probably the... is it probably is just the, the IP address needs to be switched over or something. I mean I did that because you gave me access to Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.